Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. I am joined today on the summit by Tim Smith, who has recently been recognized as the South Dakota Sports Broadcaster of the Year by the National Sports Media Association. Congratulations, Tim. Well, thank you very much, and thanks for uh, for getting a hold of me. I appreciate it. Fourth time you've won this honor, along with 2000, 2002, 2008. Uh, this is something, does it ever get old? No, absolutely not. And actually, I was very surprised uh, here this this year to win the award because uh, there were a lot of South Dakota broadcasters that deserved it, a lot of younger guys that deserved it. I call it maybe a sympathy vote for the old guy, but uh, I've been in it for for a lot of years. And uh, yeah, it was it was a nice surprise because uh, there are some some really good young guys coming up in the state of South Dakota. So uh, it was very nice indeed. You are the voice of the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers and also the broadcasting voice for the Mitchell Colonels. What goes into a good broadcast on your end? Uh, you know, I've always thought of the philosophy that I learned way back in broadcasting school when they first said, hey, don't uh, don't sit in front of a, a microphone and, and envision you're talking to a thousand people out there. Pick out pick out one person and talk directly to that person. And I've kind of kept that uh, philosophy all along. And, you know, whether it's uh, a college national championship game or whether it's a game between two towns 30 miles away that, uh, you know, have a population of 300 in each town, it's always important to somebody that's listening. It might be grandma or grandpa or aunt and uncle or or mom or dad. And uh, yeah, it's probably not a, a national championship game, but to them, it's the most important game there is. So I've always tried to treat it that way and and and, and spoke to, to an individual person out there and, and have the excitement that they would have if they were at a ball game and watching the ball game and just try and bring it alive for them. We're speaking with Tim Smith here on Midwest Sports Net, and I do encourage you, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We would appreciate that. It'll help us grow a lot here on the summit. And Tim, I know you've been doing this since 1973, so nearly 50 years uh, of broadcasting there. I, along the way, there have to have been a lot of uh, trips, a lot of stops, a lot of games, a lot of seasons. Uh, talk about some of the high points. Well, surely, and you know, and broadcasting has changed a lot, obviously, uh, since uh, since I started. And uh, you know, if I go back to the old days, I can remember doing some uh, some high school football games where I sat on the back of a flatbed truck and they rolled it up to the side of the field, and you did the best you can, you know, in those situations. And then I've done games from uh, from great stadiums across the country too. So you you see a little bit of everything on the way, but I think some of those things that you do uh, to get by early help you grow in in this profession and make you uh, make you thankful uh for what you got uh highlights boy there there are a lot of those i I've, I've been really fortunate joey here in mitchell south dakota because when i came to mitchell i grew up in the twin cities came to a smaller town out here in south dakota i really didn't know what i was what i was getting into at that time but mitchell is just a great sports community uh for basketball football especially and I had the opportunity to work with some really legendary coaches. Uh, one of them was uh, Gordon Fosnes, Gordy Fosnes, who was a, a great player, uh, actually got drafted by the old Minneapolis Lakers and then became the coach at Dakota Wesleyan University for many, many years. Very successful. And uh, I learned a lot from him in my early years, a fresh kid coming out of, uh, coming out of college. And then the high school ranks too, a legendary coach in South Dakota. He, uh, he retired as the second winningest coach in South Dakota history by the name of Gary Munson. Uh, both are in the South Dakota Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, he had nine boys state championships, four girls state championships uh, while I was doing play-by-play. I, I had the uh, the great opportunity of having one of my sons uh, play for Coach Munson and win a, a state title in 1996. That was really special, obviously, doing doing play-by-play -play during that season. But Mitchell is just a great community. I don't know how many people know we're the home of the world's only corn palace, and that's where we play our games in the uh, the corn palace, both Dakota Wesleyan basketball and uh, Mitchell Colonel basketball. And uh, people can't believe it, but we fill it. Well, we'll, we'll draw 2,000 fans for a small college basketball game like Dakota Wesleyan. So I've been really fortunate in, in that way. 
that sounds like it. Getting to call a state championship with your son as a part of the team, that that has to be uh, up there at the top. I know that's that's really special. You know, I know that a lot of prep work goes into this in, in broadcasting games, and I've thought about that sometimes too. You know, some of the places uh, where, where you've been, I've, I've called from underneath staircases too. So I, I know that you've seen a lot in your time. But, but getting to do that prep work, it helps to have people like Ian McClanahan. Ian wrote a fantastic feature about you recently for Dakota Wesleyan. And, and uh, having people like that to help you compile the stats, has that become easier in, in, in recent years then with more information at your fingertips? Oh, absolutely. There's there's no question about it. And we've got a great sports information uh, staff here at at Dakota Wesleyan, so that's helped a ton. But you're exactly right. I mean, preparation, if I have young broadcasters ask me what's more important. I say it's what you do before uh, the broadcast than actually how you do the broadcast. That kind of takes care of itself. You're, you're just painting a picture, you know, for people uh, doing the ball game. But yeah, the preparation beforehand, uh, getting some background uh, on players, getting your stats together, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, you put in a good couple hours of preparation before you do a, a, a college basketball game and uh, and you're ready to go. You know, the old saying, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And uh, I think that's from top to bottom, whether you're starting out in broadcasting or whether you're uh, whether you're Jim Nance, uh, it's it, it's all in the preparation and, and getting ready to go. Yeah, let me ask you that then, since you you dropped Jim Nance's names, do you have any or his name? Do you have anything that you set up in advance? Any any plays that you you prepare to call in advance or is it just something that's organic and natural well it's it, it pretty much comes natural once i get into the game now you know i've been doing it for so long that that's natural but again if you, if you don't have the background if you don't have the the preparation done it, it's pretty tough to do it um you know, I'll go back to uh, my first award that I that I won for the the national broadcasters, and at that time, the national award uh, went to uh, Chris Berman from ESPN. And I'm talking, you know, back uh, back about 15, 20 years ago. But Chris Berman was kind of the guy, and I remember meeting him at the uh, at the national ceremony and congratulating him on his award. And he said, "Don't congratulate me." He said, "I'm here to congratulate all these state winners from around the United States." He says. You are the guys that have to do your own preparation and and do your own work going into a ball game. He says, it's easy for me. I've got three or four people handing me stats during a game, calling in my ear. I know you guys don't have that. And he's right. We don't. But uh, that that's all part of the deal. Well, since uh, you've done this a time or two before now, three times prior to this, having won the award now for the fourth time, how do you follow up something like this? Uh, I don't I, You know, I, I'm – Getting down to the end of my career, I'm 70 years old. I still enjoy what I do. You know, the travel gets a little bit old sometimes, but I still enjoy what I do. So uh, I don't know how you how you top it. You just continue to have fun. I'm a, I'm a lucky guy. I know there's a lot of guys out there would like to have a job that I do to get paid to uh, to go watch ball games being played. Uh, so I, I just consider myself lucky and kind of now taking it year by year in my career. Well, Tim, I will tell you just from this perspective, you don't look like you have the wear and tear. You're, you're looking very, very good and, and young and ready for the next game that comes down the line. Thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit, and congratulations again, Tim Smith, the South Dakota Sports Broadcaster of the Year. Well, thank you, Joey. I appreciate it very much.